So my talk today is going to be about cacao, which is our derived version of UCAN that allows for blockchain wallets to be used as the accounts that authorize uh, access to resources. And cacaos are store, stored in IPLD as well. So uh, these were the questions we wanted to, to answer. Um, as a blockchain account holder, how can I safely permit third party to act on my behalf? Again, a familiar question uh, from the UCAN discussion. Uh, I'll kind of hone in on a couple of pieces of this. So blockchain account holder, so that was a specific need we had. Uh, people with accounts on any blockchain should be able to use uh, this mechanism. Safely, obviously cryptographically secure, unforgeable references. And on my behalf, again, familiar, uh, there should be an inversion of control compared to traditional apps where the users can revoke access to, um, to certain resources. And, uh, and the other important thing we wanted to achieve was that users shouldn't have to reapprove uh, every action. So once authorization has been granted, delegated, that should work for a certain amount of time. And uh, again, the second question goes without saying, how can I do this without being locked into a specific account model, access control list, centralized service? None of the user's data or access to it should be controlled by the application itself. So this is a very um, like brief overview of what an object capability is. So it describes a, a transferable right to perform one or more operations on a given resource. Capabilities can perform a chain, something recovered as well. And everything down the chain should be equally or less permissive than something up the chain. Uh, and it's kind of like the AM piece of IAM, Identity and Access Management, familiar to Web2 people. So this is the access management piece. You can have users, roles, um, delegated access, things like that. Uh, so this is what CAO is. Uh, it is an acronym, kind of weirdly put together, but it's an acronym for uh, like chain agnostic object capability and stored as an IPLD object, specifically designed to be uh, authenticated using blockchain accounts. And it, it inherits from the great work from, uh, of UCAN and ZCAPLD. And chain agnosticism, of course, means that various blockchains should work. We have it working with Ethereum right now, prototype for Solana is in progress. Uh, this enables an entire universe of Web2 applications to add privacy preserving features uh, using blockchain accounts. And cacaos can be deterministically serialized uh, into IPLD. Uh, using CBOR, or from IPLD using CBOR. And um, like I said earlier, it does inherit from UCAN and ZKPLD. I'll show what particular pieces. So this is the, the structure of the payload. We specifically desi uh, decided, like you can't uh, kind of adhere to the JWT standard, it is universally accepted. And uh, I think there were some discussions on the spec about the naming and stuff. We decided to kind of push for similar names, obviously, because they're already familiar to uh, the entire Web2 ecosystem. It is bandwidth efficient. You don't want to send serialized versions of larger payloads back and forth uh, on the network. And so that all was kind of what cow is, how it's somewhat related to UCAN. This is how we use it in, in Ceramic. So very briefly, Ceramic gives you um, mutability, composability, uh, and coming up soon, indexability of data um, over IPLD and IPFS. Uh, one example being you can connect all your blockchain wallets into a single identity that can be used to uh, authenticate across various um, services and applications. Or a more typical, I guess, more familiar use case would be social graphs. People can uh, store their social graphs. Applications can compose data in different ways. They're not tied to an original schema. 
They can derive schemas, update them, build apps that can kind of, it's like a positive something. You can build on work other people have done instead of being siloed applications. Uh, essential to that is the um, is ceramics concept of, uh, of streams, which is just an IPLD DAG, essentially. And, um, an update to a ceramic stream is a DAG JWS object um, stored in using the DAG Jose codec in IPLD. And um, this would be the normal flow. A blockchain wallet would provide a capability to an application. Uh, the DIT key is a session key. It can be ephemeral. So an application generates an ephemeral key uh, uses the user's authorization to sign a capability, which would be the cacao that gets stored in IPLD. And thereafter, when the protocol processes any updates to that user's data, so the user, the, the owner of the, of the DID, would authorize this, and any updates made to their content would be verified by looking at the cacao. And obviously, like JWT's work in practice, you'd have uh, time limitations, the cacao would expire for a certain time. Um, I, I believe UCAN has the same features with the expiration. And, uh, and again, the issuer is the, is the blockchain wallet holder, and the audience would be the, um, would be the application. Uh, what this enables, this enables interesting use cases like redelegation uh, of permissions. You can, as a blockchain account holder, delegate your rights for updating some of your content to like a data collective, privacy watchdog, a bank you trust. This lets you really tie into existing Web2 applications somewhat seamlessly. So this is kind of what the stack would look like. And um, the PKH, uh, if you're not familiar with that, it is a uh, it is a did method that allows representation of a blockchain address in as it did that can be used to, uh, to authorize access to resources. And that's kind of what I had, so it's not a whole lot. I wanted to kind of focus on the small subset uh, because it was of the of main interest today with the UCAN discussion. But like I said, ceramic is uh, is a way for applications to to compose data with each other and gives users access, uh, users gives users control over the information, which is what we all want. And um, yeah, that was it for me. to say that, uh, you can tell me if I'm wrong in phrasing it this way, is that ceramic has a focus in being blockchain first or blockchain primary and kind of adding data. It's um, kind of, yes. Well, it, we're, our main audience is. Yeah. That's, so, yes, so, so it is, yes. In, in Fission's case, we've thought about it the other way around is we don't a blockchain, right. but then we'll interop with off-chain data. So I think that's the right. peanut butter and chocolate of uh, ceramic mm -hmm. a little bit. Right. Um, the thing about Cacao also is that it's not limited to blockchain. It'll work with blockchain wallets and DPKH. It'll work with any other DID method as well. So it's not limited to. That is just, for now, it kind of happens to be the focus because of the community uh, yeah. impetus, but, but yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So that's something, that's not clear to people um, because DIDs are still fairly brand new and right. need some work. Uh, right. uh, the uh, did, DIDs generally there's lots of different DID kinds as well. So you can at our layer we have an included DID option, but are actually going to work with signing with Ethereum and right. ceramic stuff and so on and make right. this make DIDs be the thing that if you can presented in from anywhere, then we'll persist and use that as a persistent, as you said, a right. layer. A did is not really identity, 
It's a pseudonymous identifier. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a pseudonymous identifier. Yeah. Uh, so that your representation online is your is your identifier, and not your your wallet address, mm -hmm. or doesn't have to be a wallet address. Could be some other identity that gets translated to a did. Uh, so that's what it's. I've heard the term pseudonymous identifier. Yes. It's, it's kind of pretty succinctly captures what it is. Uh, and interestingly, if you didn't know, recently the I think the W3C standards group kind of. Yeah, uh, pushed DIDs through, even despite objections from Microsoft and Mozilla and Google and et cetera, et cetera, of course. Yeah, so I was, yeah, it, it was fun to read the, the reasoning. Yeah. Uh, I think probably another useful thing to surface is that, yeah, so the ceramic team very much participates in the UK working group. Uh, lots of discussion there on making stuff uh, like interop usefully. Uh, the other area, the standards and discussion that both vision and uh, ceramic interoperated in something called the Chain Agnostic Standards Alliance. Mm -hmm. We haven't really brought up a bunch of blockchain things in IPFS uh, this session. This We probably should because they, in fact, are major customers uh, if we want to think about it that way. So that PASA uh, is a really great group with all sorts of, like it's not a standards body, it's basically bottom-up people building code and not wanting to have to duplicate stuff. Um, and it hasn't been settled, but likely the next in person will be September in Berlin mm. at DotCon. I think. I don't know if you have updated info. I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. Joel would know more. Can you maybe talk a little bit about. So you talked about a blockchain first audience. Mm. Um, who do you want to really have some of this stuff? And, and maybe actually, I think maybe missing a little bit of a tie to IPFS. Yes. Uh, well, IPL, so IPLD is, um, so cacao is our store in IPLD, but uh, uh, ceramic content, we store it in streams. So an account has a stream which represents uh, data that can be modified. So you can, you can add things to your account profile, for example, a very basic example to your profile, change it. Uh, and ceramic keeps track of the, the history of updates so that they're always verifiable cryptographically. And this is a hash-linked structure uh, stored in IPL, using IPLD in IPFS, um, which means we've had all the same problems with IPFS. <laughs> we, uh, we moved away from JS IPFS because uh, like every few days you'd see the memory utilization go up, drop off a cliff because it restarted, because it OM'd. Uh, so we moved away from JS IPFS to Kubo. And that's been much better. Uh, it has its own issues, which obviously we need to, to work with. Server side. Or server side. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've had problems with uh, uh, serialization, which somewhat I think related to the DHT and the way it looks up uh, peers. If you have a, a ton of peers that for some reason are offline, uh, we would see like at the same hourly cadence that it does like the Thing it is the DH, it's the, I forgot what, what uh, I think it's BitSwap or it's, it's something in libp 2 p perhaps. Uh, every hour you'd see the CPU spike, like shoot up and go back down. Yeah. 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 Like on the app, like it was like 10 minutes past. It's just weird. Uh, there might be someone in the network who's doing something that's yeah. coming. No, uh -uh. No. So we've, we've seen this as well, we've reported it, where basically peer connections get evicted and reboot and the table overflows and it like nukes your local router. Super fun. There also used to be a, this isn't fixed, but we were seeing something similar. Essentially, the RAM usage would just increase forever and then it would crash and get restarted. Yeah. And then you just keep. No, like the entire process. Yeah, there's two different problems, yeah. Okay, so what's happened to this thing? We, we, we sent one to Hector like two months ago. Yeah. I need to follow up with him. I have meeting him Friday. So I'll chat okay, with him. Yeah. Yeah. Put, put it on the, on the, the GitHub. Uh, on GitHub? Okay. We put it in the in the Filecoin Slack. No, no. Put, put, yeah. Submit the issue to the IPFS, okay. and then someone okay. will probably see it. And if they don't, just ping me. Because, yeah. uh, like, Kuba. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Kuba. Make sure that because I completely agree with you. Yeah. yeah. Make well, sure that issue is submitted with. 
Yeah, because yeah. like we, we, we diagnose these problems all the time. Sometimes it's a bit off, it gets like mm -hmm. jammed up. Uh, yeah. Sometimes it's like, so this could be refreshing, but I think that should be happening much, much, much faster than once every hour. That's why I'm confused, because once every hour, I don't okay. know how many hours it takes. It's this, we, we, we've seen this, including in other things like S2 or where we're like, oh, there isn't any way to config this. So we like added a PR to make a config file as an example of the S2. So this is at some layer that is shared across the system. So, but, so, but what is? I'll get into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So, so, two different problems. One is GSIPFS and the memory leak, uh, which we reported and, and a, a year ago. Oh, Kubo, Kubo has a memory leak too. Okay, it's interesting. Space, okay. But, yeah. Okay. I thought you were referring to GSIPFS. Oh. Okay. And then the the routing table thing is uh, is a different one. So we do have a dump. I'll post it to to GitHub. Uh, yeah. Huh? How many in production examples have you seen of apps exchanging data or using each other's data? We already have several. Um, like, like, I wouldn't be able to rattle off the top of my head, but. Um, There's Series A funding said 400 apps. That's probably accurate. Right. No, so like yeah. 400 apps are using each other's app data? So it's, uh, it, it's not that they're all using one common pool of data, it's that they want to collaborate with other apps, which could be one app, could be more apps. So how many are actually doing it? That I can find out for you. I would marry it. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So like, yeah. this is much more common in the blockchain world? Yeah, right? yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, they're over, um, overlapping cooperative yeah, it's, it's, branches, I, I, yeah. I just yeah, yeah. use that tone because I think, you know, with this conversation around the DID spec, yes. like everything, yes. like, I just want to see the real examples of yeah. actually function. Yeah. Like, right. Some other apps data is not true. Like, yeah. I, I, th I think some of the stuff is is um, it, it's various things came up, but I think it's actually useful for all of us to maybe even write little like um, or document or point to where we have this already is almost like a mission statement of how we think people will be using our stuff in an ideal situation. So, as an example, the way that user data is owned in web native is actually a lot more like desktop or mobile programming, which is a little bit like Pyrgos as well, where um, the app asks permission to the user's data mm -hmm. so that reuses, well, I have photos, right. and I have a gallery app and an editing app and a publishing app. Like, this is not very, like, controversial from a user perspective. This is, like, you know, say this is like a single user mode. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe that's also a super interesting thing because we haven't had these capabilities on the web other than multi-tenant databases that are portable. Yeah. Well, and, and I think it's a, the big thing, right, is uh, you've talked to people when they're coming with a web mindset. It's immediately like, right? well, I have not even you know, I'm not an X, Y, Z in the web, but it's easy to go to iOS and Android. Yeah. You do it all the time, yeah. right? So I, I think there's also some level of the capabilities of the platform inform what apps have the, existed. The biases that the people have in the conversation. Yeah. So. so you mentioned that the cows have some sort of inheritance from Zcash LP. Mm -hmm. And we also talked about you can. So yes. I'm curious for you to share whether you think there's a world where like those three plus different standards like come together, um, such that there like maybe isn't this fork between things for a blockchain audience and things for the rest, like for other audiences. And do you think that'll happen? So I mean, it depends on how things really play out. Um, with the specs and usage and what people like for, um, we would hope that cacao can be used across uh, the various use cases, not limited to blockchain, um, but eventually it'll be like, go for it. Uh, so, and correct me if I'm wrong, huh? from, from discussions and from the spec, one of the things that cacao is attempting to do is provide a common wrapper around the and potentially others. That's, uh, they have it for ZKLD right now. There's some discussion in the UK working group about the right way to represent it. Because, um, yeah, because with data um, we're trying to make it very easy to implement them. Uh, and most data UT libraries are deterministic. And so we have one encoding that's non deterministic and another IPLD uh, flavored one where you, you know, keep the direction of order and like spaces a certain way and, and all these things. Um, and that one can definitely be done. But there's some discussion of like, well, what's the right way to do this? Um, so even though these might not like 
directly interoperate, and there are some spec level differences, like not just which keys are available, but like literally how the system works between ZFLD and UCAM, um, that make them not fully compatible. Um, at least we can represent them in a consistent way, potentially, with the CAD. Like, do you foresee Vision supporting the CAD at some, like, some point in the next 12 months? And like, the point of view coming from is like, figuring out whether or what free storage should ever support you know, these things. So what free storage is about the UCAMs? Yes. Um, yes, yes. And, so probably, but I guess I'm figuring out whether... Yeah, so I, to the other I think the, the path for <laughs> ceramic, one of the challenges there if you do um, um, browser extensions is one of the, the, the sports as well as wall connect is, as, a, as a lock and sort of thing. Pure glass and vision are like, please no browser extensions, although again, we're consuming gigs. Um, so in that space, the did session keys are going to be you can powered if I say that correct. So that solves your off chain problem. Uh, yes, I think so. But like that's the discussion we're having. Yeah, in the, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the, in the working group. Right. I think if I had to draw a grade on doing a fly, so I made it wrong. Is ZFLD is web and browser centric. Um, Ceramics approach starts with a blockchain centric mm -hmm. audience mm -hmm. today, mm -hmm. and Fission is a, or UCAN is a GWT centric, as in we're agnostic and are definitely beyond the web. Um, is maybe a useful triangle? Yeah. Um, so, in terms of should uh, web free storage, like what should be the case for? So, uh, not to put words direct, directly in his mouth, but uh, mm -hmm. from uh, the little theme of this, like rapidly. Some of the argument has been this extra wrapper doesn't really get us anything for this use case that you can just give us. Why would we take the why would we put it into this wrapper? And so that's some of the discussion as well. Like, well, why would we want to support CFLD at all? And why would we even have those concerns when we pull it into the stack today and have some like explain direction for use cases like what we And then the other question is like, what is the capital be here to pass? Like why does why does CAS need to Um, it, it's a way to, it, it's more of a way to unify and tie together these various elements instead of having incompatibility. So we're trying to kind of bridge the gap, put it together in a, in a more consistent way that also works with blockchain wallets. So that's what I would say. Uh, not sure if that answers the question, but. It's an abstraction, right? Do you have a history to tell me? <laughs> Thankfully, I do not. Yes. That is a good question. I am not familiar uh, as much with that ecosystem, so I will have to find out. Can, can you define ZCAP LD for me? I'll be the guy that has. You might have a better definition. Sorry, throw you under the bus. So it, it's actually the. I want to hear so, this too. So, cool. <laughs> so the, the lineage really goes down to the early 90s, like the early 90s, where there was SDKI spooky. Uh, as they're called, and then it's because some of the like actual base components didn't exist yet. It didn't. It was a great idea that didn't really go anywhere. Right? They tried to tried to use it to sign uh, online certificates, but uh, it just never really got there. Got adopted and sort of fizzled out. Um, and then in about 2017, 2018, um, there was an attempt to bring this idea back. Uh, with Lynx data and a very RDF model. And this was uh, eventually became ZCAP LD, the LD to Lynx data. Mm -hmm. um, and essentially lets you describe okay, so this signer, this always cryptographically, you know, with the uh, encryption, this signer um, owns some resource and they're going to delegate access to it to somebody else with these intentions. Um, and so then it'll be, you'll have to write to this path in the file system, where you'll have to publish this many data bytes onto both your desk storage, right? That kind of things. Um, and you uh, can't came about because we needed a lightweight way of doing some of these things in a, uh, um, you know, like in more web free mode, but then also with a bunch of capabilities that we should be seeing as a technology. Like all of these are pretty early specs, right? So Zika Belgium's in version 4.4, version 4.9, and it's just like they're all in all the time as well. So there's not overlap where they're all capability systems. 
so they all have this, this basic idea that we're going to sign something that says, yeah, I'm going to give credit and ability to do these things with this resource, right? As a broad picture, but the, the actual approach and the, like, the capabilities around what are like the things that you're allowed to express. There's a bunch of others too. There's like Biscuits, which does it with data log, and um, uh, uh, recently somebody did a Snark based one as well. So like, there, there's a whole bunch of them. There's a lot of interest in the capability based systems. So, so, so this might be detracting from me on top a little bit. But, it's not um, totally cool. Let's, so let's, like, let's, let's, let's actually say thank you. <laughs> <laughs>